Uh, with this, I'd like to call Ben Blake, who's our current mayor and a very distinguished fellow. Probably no. a, a future Hall of Fame member if this thing lasts that long. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, friends. After a two-year pandemic pause, it is good to be back. And a great big thank you to the committee members of the Hall of Fame for all the good work and hard work that they've done to bring these people to life, especially to Jill Barnes, who I know did the research in order to write up the book biographies of these uh, men who were so important to Milford. I know that Bill McDonald did as well. And thank you to Mr. Ortoliva and to Daddy Keselowski, whose illustrations bring these folks to life. Um, I also want to echo the comments of Mr. Barnes when I say uh, to his family, Jerry Patton was one of a kind. He was a gentleman. He w was appreciated by all. And you can't say that about uh, all politicians, but he was a statesman. <laughs> uh, he really did bring a smile to everybody's face, and he was a big part, he was the impetus to this Hall of Fame project. So um, my condolences on behalf of the city of Milford. Thank you. But I'm looking around this room and I see people with a lot of deep Milford roots. Milford's in our bones, it's part of us and who we are. And uh, today we're honoring some people with deep Milford roots, including Mr. Milford, Alan Jepson. Mm -hmm. um, one of my friends and mentors Someone who I've turned to many times for advice, as well as another former mayor, Mr. Kozlowski, who again was a, I considered a good friend, someone who I turned to many times for advice, as well as uh, Mr. Argraves. I know Mr. Argraves' family is here, and uh, I 95 is uh, a real tribute to his engineering feats as the Commissioner of Highways back a few years ago and to some other famous folks who I did not know either, um, including uh, a signer of the Constitution of the United States and vice presidential candidate, and of course, Mr. Smith, who was, among other things, uh, the founder of Milford Rotary that still has a huge impact on our community. Wow. So these are some big, important people in the history of Milford. Uh, they have some tales which I've started to read in the write-up that Mr. Barnes put out. Uh, and their stories are not just individual stories, but the stories of the city of Milford. They're part of our community narrative. So a great big thank you to all of the members of the Hall of Fame for making sure that that rich story is told. Thank you. Thank you. First, I'd like to recognize the induct inductees' families. So any, any uh, descendants of Alan Jepson, if you would please stand. Hello. <laughs> Newman Argraves, uh, his, his son, Larry Argraves, is 96, and he's here yeah. with us today. Wow. That's right. That's, right. That's, right. that's, right. that's, right. that's, right. that's one of them. I'm expecting a whole bunch more here, but I don't know if they found them. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't go to school here, you won't be able to find it. So that's, that's the problem that we have. Uh, a number of years ago, I was at a, a board meeting of the committee, and I asked the board uh, who was that engineer who designed the I-95 in Milford, uh, because that probably that has the biggest impact that you could think of, um, and. Uh, no one could remember, and finally I got around to it, and I realized that Larry Argraves was my client in the 80s, so I gave him a call. <laughs> I've, known, I've known Joe since he was a little boy. <laughs> yeah. We want to talk to you later. <laughs> uh, since I was born yesterday, that's not a long time ago. Um, but I want, I'm thrilled that Larry could be here uh, at, on many levels. And so, Larry, thanks for coming. It's, it's, it's wonderful to see you. And uh, I'll get your will done shortly. Uh, anyone uh, from the Koslowski family? I think there might be a couple. Just a few. And uh, 
Uh, I might be a Smith or two here as well. Um, yeah. You don't have to stand. I know you're terribly embarrassed, um, but uh, we're thrilled to have you. Please stand. <laughs> Uh, Smiths are well recognized in the brochure. If anyone does not have one, we still have a table full down the end. Be sure to take one, maybe bring one back to your family. Uh, we're thrilled to have you on those. Um, what I'd like to do at this stage is just recite a little bit about each of the new inductees that we brought in this year. Um, I think most of you, well, Goslowski's all know very, very well. Uh, most people remember uh, Ed Goslowski. Uh, he was a, a, a real power for uh, the Polish community and throughout the state. Uh, first one being represented uh, on a number of commissions at state level. And uh, of course, uh, our mayor from 69 through, anybody remember to the last day? 71, 71. So a, one of the shortest terms of any mayor, <laughs> but he went on to bigger and better things at state level. Um, I was uh, very blessed to work with Ed Kozlowski over the years at the Book Hall of Fame and in politics back in the uh, early days in the 80s and such. Uh, and, uh, he's severely missed. Uh, I'm uh, honored to have known him and thank you. I want to thank the family for coming here in such, such force. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's good to see you all. Um, uh, is, are any Kozlowski still living on Gun Street? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, I, I was, I was Gun Street uh, and Eddie um, recorded one of the uh, more interesting hist historical facts in Milford. Uh, there was a, a black preacher out of New York uh, who had uh, a number of uh, uh, girlfriends, I guess, uh, here on Gun Street. And he got into some kind of trouble at, at the time. Uh, and the police finally caught him on Gun Street uh, hiding in the coal bin. If he had kept his eyes closed, they would never have seen him. And Eddie, no, that, that's a true story. Uh, and Eddie has rec recounted that story about a thousand times. And uh, Gun Street, uh, other than being a, a, a memento of Jasper Gun, our first MD in Milford back in the 1600s, uh, is best known probably for that one fact in that Eddie lived there. <laughs> Uh, the Jepsons, I was a good friend of uh, Alan Jepson, of course on the board, and uh, my first recollection of Alan on a one-to-one -one basis was when I was, well, 60, uh, 63 he ran, so I would have been 11. Mm -hmm. And uh, his kindness and his friendship even then, uh, I can remember him uh, uh, giving me his political handouts, which, which I could take back my mother. Uh, I was kind of jealous that some of the girls were getting these little head coverings for the, for the rain with the donkey on it. And he said, okay, uh, you may have noticed that. So he handed me this little rain cover for the women to bring back to my mother so I wouldn't feel bad about not getting one. <laughs> uh, so uh, Alan uh, was always one of the most personal individuals and dignified persons and a, a tribute to humanity uh, if for no other reason they lived in a house full of women. <laughs> uh, that's not the most difficult thing in the whole world, but it's pretty close. Uh, Newman Argraves. Uh, Newman is probably one of the most important people in the history of Milford um, because he was here when the interstate system came through Connecticut. <clears throat> I-95, or its predecessor, the Connecticut Turnpike, was a design that, was, that existed all the way back into the 1930s. By the 1950s, these interstate systems like the Pennsylvania Turnpike <coughs> and the Mass Pike uh, were designed not so much to serve the community, but to pass through it as quickly as possible. Uh, if you go out west, you'll find many places where there's 20 miles or 30 miles between exits, and that all the towns in between died. Uh, Connecticut could have had such a turnpike, Newman Argraves, prevented that. Uh, he also blessed Milford with the most uh, exits of any city in the state. Um, we're matched by, I think, new, by Bridgeport now because of some additional exits that have been created. Uh, but we also have two, the two from Devon, from Stratford into Devon, 
and of course, uh, uh, in Orange, serving the Woodmont and Live Oaks area. Uh, he did that because he knew Milford better than almost anybody and uh, accommodated us uh, as much as possible. Uh, in the uh, write up, I mentioned that I talked to uh, Larry R. Graves at one point, and he said he deserves recognition because he was a great man. When I did the write up in his background and his history, I was surprised how great a man he was. Uh, he, did, he designed projects in Paraguay, uh, in Milford, of course, uh, in Washington State. Uh, he designed a naval yard uh, in Hingham, Massachusetts, and, and projects really all over the world. Uh, he introduced the ability to go onto a site and radiograph the metal in the building to see if it was su sufficient to withstand any stress and strains uh, in the building itself. That was unknown before that. You know, if the building stood up, it was fine. If it fell down, it wasn't so good. <laughs> All right? uh, Milford has a history of that, too. If you look across the, the pond here, uh, not at my house, uh, <laughs> but at the uh, first church, uh, the predecessor church was so poorly constructed, it almost fell down. Uh, that was in the 1700s. It was replaced with the, this beautiful colonial structure we have now. Uh, so you don't really want to live in a society where maybe it'll be there and maybe it won't. Newman Argraves helped make sure that it would be there forever. Uh, last, and uh, I really enjoyed the, you know, the research on this one, and I want to thank Frosty Smith for sending me a, a number of uh, um, uh, George J. Smith's write-ups. Uh, George J. Smith was a prolific writer about everything that he did uh, in longhand. Uh, I got a small piece of that uh, and it's, it's truly amazing uh, the insights he gives you to Milford in the 19th century. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the things, keep your eye on the Milford Hall of Fame website because in the near future, hopefully near future, uh, we're going to publish that on the website and you'll be able to read about what life was for a boy in Milford uh, at the turn of the century. Um, he uh, <coughs> dropped out of school at 16, uh, having learned more than enough for his, uh, in his opinion, um, and later went on to the Board of Education for 27 years. I believe for most of those, being Secretary of the Board of Education. That's uh, not, not bad for a dropout. Uh, it's not quite Bill Gates, but it's close. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to address them as to our inductees. I don't think I missed any. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Jared Ingersoll, the one person you probably don't care about. Uh, Jared um, is the son of a, a former inductee who is right next to us here, Jared Ingersoll Sr. Uh, Jared Sr. Uh, was a Tory. Uh, Revolutionary War, being a Tory was not a good idea. Uh, he did manage to uh, redeem himself in a lot of ways, became an important figure in, in, uh, in the country. Uh, but his son was a patriot true and true. Uh, he signed the Declaration of Independence, I'm sorry, the Constitution, uh, and he also ran for Vice President of the United States in 1812. 